What is the Dominion mandate? Is there still one today? And if so, how does that affect the biblical narrative? Up next on this episode of the Kingdom Project Podcast. Welcome to a new episode. Yes, this is the Kingdom Project Podcast, uh, where we have discussions on biblical theology and interpretation. The emphasis is on context, all right? Context, 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 and grace with a goal to promote biblical literacy by displacing and debunking most of the modern evangelical interpretations that are out there today with the challenge of engaging in healthy conversation that may stretch but sharpen iron. I am your host, Marcus Hall. I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for streaming. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, Thanks for reviewing. So um, first off, just right off the bat, I just want to say, well, my microphone is a fallen a little bit there. All right. I just want to say some of the episodes I had been asking a little bit for some uh, some he- financial help, just ask for money, basically, and uh, put it on uh, fa- or Facebook as well on my uh, personal um, page and the podcast page as well. And, well, a handful of you have responded, and I just want to say thanks. Thank you for uh, giving some financial support. Um, thank you for the generous uh, donations, and that will go towards this next year of broadcasting this podcast. So thank you very much. I appreciate it, and uh, this will help keep going. And any extra money that comes in, that just stays in that uh, the account for the podcast. And so I, uh, I'm thinking I would really like to make a short little commercial <laughs> for social media to and have it advertised. Um, have some funny ideas for that. Um, but anyway, uh, it's just an idea right now. That's it. So I'm not going to promise anything. All right. So we're talking about the Dominion mandate. Okay. So if you don't know what that is, oh man, it, it can just go in so many directions. Um, it is something that's been in theology for quite some time. Um, but also it's branched into other types of, uh, theologies or theories and things like that. I know there was a group of men or two guys back in the round in the seventies who both said they received a word from God. And when they both got together, they had not shared that word with each other. And when they did, it was the same word, um, is what they claim. And this was, um, about dominion taking dominion or having these seven mountain mandate um which evolved has evolved many 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 times in uh evangelical circles and charismatic uh circles as well um the seven mountains or seven spheres of influence is about um the church uh, going into these different mountains like entertainment, you know, Hollywood, arts and stuff like that, political branches, uh, government, um, schools and and so on. Um, going in, uh, having people who are Christian and um, work in these different areas of um, of life that we have in our world to influence. Right. Which, you know, basically. I mean, isn't that what the body should be doing anyway? I mean, most Christians have jobs that are in, you know, the world, you know, as we would say. And, um, you know, you're an influencer because you're in Christ. And so your good works and all this type of stuff should be, you know, should be uh, relevant. Now, people have taken this further, though, and sometimes there are some who we'll say it's more a a very militant type of takeover. Um, Some, like like I said, it's such a broad um, brushstroke. It's such a, just a huge umbrella term now for many, many different uh, variations of it. So there's some militant views in there that we need to go and take over all of these things in that you would have like the, um, 
uh, fundamentalist and theonomist and things like that. These are people who believe that America needs to be in a theocracy under God's law. Um, and when I say that, I mean the law. Um, they break the law of the uh, Mosaic Covenant up into moral, ci- um, civil, and ceremonial. So um, moral and civil law should be reinstated. <laughs> And uh, you, you can look that up. It just gets out there. It gets crazy. <clears throat> Other than that, you're going to just have some people that's just going to say, okay, this was this uh, mandate that God gave Adam when he created humanity in the garden. And, um, and then that's what we should still be doing. Um, also, you, you, though, you're going to get um, a more... Um, maybe, you know, charismatic type of view over it, that um, we are to take dominion over our, not just our lives, but our work, our family, our home, you know, the the town uh, that we live in and bring down strongholds and things like that. So it would tie into some spiritual warfare. It also ties in, though, to being filled with the Holy Spirit and the gifts and all that stuff. So, you know, Jesus says all power and authority has been given to him. He shares that with us because he dwells in us. Um, but but th- they think we need to take dominion. And by taking that dominion, we can help um, uh, Christianize the world uh, faster to bring Jesus back sooner. So there you have that. Now, the most more the, the common, the common, okay, is what I'm going to give you at first, and then we're just going to talk about it and question it, okay? And it says, um, the just the very basic view of the dominion mandate is that the the command of God to Adam, which would then go to all of mankind, to take dominion over all the earth, okay? And this is in Genesis one, right? Um, God, you know, says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So he creates man, right? And God blesses them. And God said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. And uh, rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Okay, so they will say the common basic view is the command of God was for Adam and his descendants to have dominion over the earth and everything in it. So the the mandate then is best summarized in be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it over the fish and the birds and all that. So in order... Uh, for that to be accomplished, see that that comes to us now. We we are new, uh, new creations. We're born again in, in Christ, and so it's continued. Okay, so um, in order for us uh, Christians to accomplish the command of God, several things are included: that men and women must work together, have children who are then trained in a godly uh, Christian fashion to carry out the dominion mandate. Uh, that we need to learn how the world operates, which requires expertise and uh, areas of knowledge like in engineering, mathematics, physics, all that type of stuff. Um, this way we can better fulfill God's command. Our offspring must then be involved in these areas. Now, that seems like it starts to branch into that whole seven mountain mandate okay and then it says the um the uh the exercise then see the exercise of the dominion has to be done with wisdom because we are the steward we're stewards right so as stewards who are carefully and reverently acting in a responsible ways with what god has entrusted to us like god gave adam the world right uh so so don't don't deplete uh the resources don't destroy the land things like that now <clears throat> um, and, and then they'll say, and then after Noah's flood, it was given again by God. Uh, God blessed Noah and his sons. He said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. Uh, the fear of you and the ter- terror of you will be on every beast of the earth and on every bird of the sky with everything that creeps on the ground, all that stuff. 
he says that and he says uh every movie thing that's alive shall be food for you i give all to you as i as i gave the green plant this is now he is saying you can eat animals and this is in genesis 9 uh, so they'll say then that it's it's clear that God desires us to exercise dominion in the world. And since we're made in his image, we are to reflect his sovereignty in our dominion and his wisdom in our actions. Um, uh, it, because all people, uh, Christian and non-Christian, are included in Adam because of federal he- headship, they say. Now, Christians belong now in the, the federal headship, though, of, of Christ. Uh, but they'll say the dominion mandate is for everyone. However, Christians um, uh, are the ones with the full responsibility, even though they have given up much of the responsibility in this area. All right. Um, and then they'll say one of the manifestations of the dominion mandate is to make disciples of all nations. Because uh, Jesus, you know, said, go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, uh, which he gave to the disciples, actually. So uh, <laughs> and they're the ones still fulfilling that because we are reading we're, we're, we are reading the, the, the Bible. We dedicate ourselves to the apostles teaching. So. Uh, but but the, the, they'll go on to say we're not only supposed to take dominion over the physical realm but to also express a form of dominion over the spiritual one as well when we make disciples of all nations by spreading the gospel. So um, it, it's that that's the basic overview of it. So we have to ask, um, what, was, it, was it a mandate? Was it a command? Is there one or has it been fulfilled? All right. Um, so even out of the other, all the groups I mentioned, this um, is a common position among young earth creationists as well, which um, is that mankind has dominion over earth. Okay. Um, that, that means, so basically it, it means that humanity has a special authority a rule and reign over the creatures and creation itself. All right. So um, <clears throat> that means, as I like, I read um, to you a, a moment ago, and the basic overall definition, it has been inferred by most people that a command was given to Adam, therefore going on to all of his descendants to have d- this dominion. All right. That means all humanity then. Okay. So um, obviously it's not named or defined in scripture. So offering some sort of a deeper definition, which everyone could agree on is really not possible because there's several different forms of it. Okay. But like I said, Genesis one, 26 through 28 right Uh, it does say let them have dominion all that and so god created man in his own image and then god blessed them and god said to them be fruitful and multiply okay it it's very clear man's made in the image of god and adam was given dominion over creatures and given the authority to subdue um, the earth, okay, and and dominion is to prevail against its rule and reign, okay, or tread down upon, okay. But within the the context of the creation, and then what happens, the fall, right? Um, you know, we see that Adam had dominion. Adam had rule over creation within that, okay, reign and rule. That he had the the ability to sustain that creation through obedience, right? But then he also then had the power to make it fall and suffer if he was disobedient. And we know that that happened, okay? So if you understand the biblical narrative and what self-imposed you know, trauma would come 
to Adam because of the sin, the fall, uh, the, the, the ability to have a dominion and then, then for it to crumble under his dominion is what we actually see. Okay, so um, it's it it's all of this though. From all of that is where this dominion mandate has come from, and then formed by theologians. Uh, but I I believe it assumes too much. Okay, so if you use the concept, all right, using that, it it, it just doesn't. It doesn't actually stop there. It goes, like I said, it's just very broad, okay? But um, uh, when you start to think of the just how big of its application, it's a bit overwhelming, okay? So sometimes if something is a bit overwhelming when it's coming more from man, and their ideals rather than uh, and just not enough biblical text, that should be a, a red flag. Okay. <laughs> so like when, when some singular ideal is used as the, the proof argument for a topic. All right. Then, then you should be able to realize, realize or recognize that the ideal must not be per, exactly precisely defined. Right. Um, because it's being employed as a, as a, as a proof argument on topics which are not necessarily closely related a lot of times, okay? But the main assumption here and the problem is that this dominion mandate is said to to be and it's treated like a command from God, right? Um, so overstating the case by saying that it is an order or a command then would have huge consequences to the biblical narrative because with an order or a command comes the implied obedience to the one whom it was given. All right. So uh, the idea of an order being inserted into the, the passage that we read places an extra burden of obedience on Adam before the fall beyond just not eating of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. See, it's God said to them, but only one command is given to them. All right. You have to look at that text and look, God said, be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth. And then God gave them a command. So is the subdue the earth is the dominion have dominion over the, everything, a statement or is it a command? Because God only gave them the one command to not eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Okay, so this additional command would lead to a question that if Adam failed to subdue the earth before this fall happened, would that have been a sin? Would that have been the fall instead of uh, e eating of the fruit of the, the knowledge of good and evil? Right? If so, what would the consequence have been then? Right? Would he have? Would the same thing have happened? Would would he have been banished from the garden? Would that have brought condemnation to all of mankind? All right. So, just there with that that placed here on the table, it's not such an easy proposition to just casually refer to dominion as a command. All right, so it, it becomes imperative to understand that that you know there were no other moral obligations that Adam had other than to not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That's it. For without eating of the tree of the that knowledge of good and evil, there would not have been any sin or moral moral failures. All right. <clears throat> so th there was because there was no wider or broader law of God that Adam was under. God just said th those other things to him. There was no commandment to keep the Sabbath holy. There was uh, or any other type of command outside of the one. That's it. So to, to assume um, 
to assume that I think is 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 error. And to assume that any part of the of the Torah, which was given to Moses to govern the nation of Israel, um, which was laying out a path to re- redemption, right? Uh, to assume any of that actually applied to Adam before the original sin, then it becomes a flawed understanding of the entire plan of God and the whole scarlet thread throughout the rest of Scripture, right? To the of through types and shadows that lead to Christ. All right. So, um, um, it, now you can, you can notice that the dominion was not described as a command in the biblical text. All right. Because of the biblical language. All right. Let us make, it means to appoint or bestow, bestow. We're granting. All right. So the passage is best understood to mean a right was passed from the Godhead to Adam. So what was given to Adam was a position of dominion, and it was an endowment. It was um, something that was bestowed um, to them. It was not an order that was given. All right? Um, So in in that whole understanding of, of that usage of the word, uh, the original Hebrew word, and then in the context, right, uh, as being a position of appointment it is in a, a huge agreement by biblical scholars um, through history. All right. Um, so over and over again. OK, so um, it, it's that whole let us make applies to the image of man, but then again to the dominion of man. When we see it, let them have dominion, let them rule. It's clear um, <clears throat> that a commanding position was being given to man, but that is different from commanding man to command, which is how uh, those who preach or teach the dominion mandate have rendered it in their concept. Okay, so the the burden of proof then to reestablish dominion as a forceful demand from God to Adam, which would have required obedience, must lie with proponents of the dominion mandate for for it uh, for it breaks the precedent because um, you have to look at how God issue issued a command in Genesis two sixteen seventeen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you you shall surely die. So commanded here, all right, um, that is absent from Genesis 1. All right, and, and so you have to notice the difference between Genesis, the Genesis 1 text and the Genesis 2 text, okay? In Genesis 2, the command to not eat, right, was paired with a consequence if that command was disobeyed. So neither this Hebrew word for command nor a consequence is found in the first text in Genesis 1 when discussing the dominion of man. So the ideal that dominion was commanded to Adam is, is just foreign to the text. It's not there. What's relayed in the Jewish scriptures um, is that God, before the fall, let Adam have a position of authority. Okay? And that's what's going on. Now, when you move later into so much of the narrative, but then you get to Jesus and all that, we have to just start thinking first. Dominion over the, the, the earth means dominion over nature, too. So we have earthquakes, tornadoes, hurricanes, all that type of stuff, all right? Um, a lot of times, uh, well, not a lot, most of, the, pretty much every time, natural disasters will put us at their mercy, right? All of those things demonstrate occurrences that force man to respond to them the best that we can, okay? But Jesus demonstrated that he did have dominion, over nature because he's calming the seas, right? So we know that Jesus is also referred to as the last Adam, and he displayed an authority and a dominion over creation. All right. Now, in contrast, none of us has no no, no such command or rule over nature, 
right? The dis- the disciples of Jesus were amazed that the sea obeyed Jesus, all right? They did not have that, that dominion over uh, creation, but they witnessed the one who did, okay? So, um, <laughs> and there's, of course, there's weather warriors today and stuff like that, okay? Um, I know people are... Uh, uh, who is that? Kate Kerr. Kate Kerr. Every time a hurricane's coming, she's always at like on the coast, praying for it to go and 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 be gone. And we got to break the stronghold over it and stuff like that. Okay, so <laughs> um, now uh, there there's people though that say that that dominion that was given to Adam implies uh, the work to subdue forces of nature, things like that. Um, but dominion is not the attempt or work to try to subdue. Um, nowhere is the struggle to overcome actually labeled um, like a victory. Okay, so no, nor should the struggle against nature be labeled as dominion. It, it's, it's dominion is not the attempt to try to subdue. It's not. All right. Um. The, the whole the whole ideal that a demonstration of that original what they it's called a dominion mandate is is just yeah. it's distorted and it's a it, it's an uh, impotent um, it shows how imp, impotent our view of of true dominion is okay um, <laughs> basically basically that's the gist of it. Also, we have to think about dominion over animals. I mean, you can get a dog or a cat. You can train them. You can housebreak them and all that. They will give them commands. Yeah. Do you actually have dominion or did you train them? Okay. Like lions and bears, venomous snakes, things like that. That doesn't demonstrate a subjection to men's will at all. All right. Um, you can raise a lion or a tiger from the time it's uh, it has been born, but at some point, most of the time, they end up attacking that person and killing them. So no one's truly ever subdued uh, an animal or taken total dominion over that creature. <laughs> so it's not there. Um, as a matter of fact. Uh, you know, we, we, we are more quick to want to try to kill a lot of, uh, well, insects and stuff, right? Mosquitoes and mice and things like, I mean, I kill bugs for a living. So, um, unless, you know, if dominion over insects is me spraying chemical to keep them out of your house, then, uh, uh, so be it. But I don't think that's what the Bible is talking about. All right. (laughs) Uh, yeah, because of po- the power of the biblical faith is is a practical faith, and, and that's it. Okay, <laughs> so, um, but we we need to get to some 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 uh, some text here about Jesus and take a look at, at at Jesus and to see if this has really been fulfilled. And if this has been fulfilled. What does that mean for us now? And this this does go into the various forms of dominion mandate <clears throat> today because Jesus is restoring and redeeming us back to the, the original intent, placing us back to how we were originally created, obviously. All right. So obviously Adam sinned. So the the dominion over creation was lost, you know? So was it relinquished it? Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> um, that should be a given, uh, to deny that man's dominion was lost would be to just deny scripture. But those even who talk about the dominion mandate, they, they don't, you know, they, they do say that was lost. So now Jesus came, um, and all that. So that's when Jesus comes into the picture. Because oh, you like my little pauses where I'm like, mm. um, we know like Ephesians two, one through three. Okay. Man is in sin. Um, all those who don't know, know Christ that implies an obedience or dominion to something else. Right. Um, and it says, and he, 
or and you he and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also uh, we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh it was the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath just as the others so here we learn right if you are not in christ you're following the lust of the flesh the desires of the flesh all right or flesh prince of the power of the air could be debated i'm a preterist um there's various definitions of that i've gone over it several times but i'm not going to go over it here uh because that's not the the topic all right but w there was there what there is a sense in the new testament of a, the devil or the adversary that was having some sort of a d dominion or authority all right but in that transitional period time during his defeat and his complete annihilation right we know that um but just man is sinful they're in their sin lust of the flesh desires of the flesh and all that okay so, um, we just move on. Okay. <laughs> we'll see in Colossians 1, 13, 14, that because we have repented and received the Son of God, that he has delivered us from the power of darkness or the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Okay, so the sin, um, which is darkness, active on earth, okay, was one of the darkness, okay, is it, darkness, it's sin. It's being blinded, it's being ignorant, all right? Um, so it then follows, like, you know, th that's what's kind of going on here, okay? But, Let's just get the to the biblical narrative that, you know, after the fall, the battles between some dominion of darkness, a sin, all right, and then the dominion of Jesus. In the New Covenant uh, scriptures, we clearly see the developed theme of Adam's dominion being lost to sin, death, darkness, right? And then Jesus, the last Adam, restoring what was lost in establishing an eternal okay an eternal dominion and kingdom that's everlasting and that cannot fail so the biblical narrative from start to finish develops this concept and we see something happening to the dominion of darkness that was ushered in with the fall all right so in the scriptures post resurrection time there's a common theme that a dominion of Jesus has been established. All right. It, it even says that all things are put under his feet. When it, in Ephesians 1, 22, 23, it says, And he put all things under his feet and gave, um, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. This occurred after Jesus was subjected, right, to what happened to him, the dominion of darkness that crucified him, all right, and then the death before he was res resurrected. It's explained in Romans 6, 9, 11, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him for the death that he died. He died to, to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So the actual dominion, the act, no, you know what? The actual dominion of even Jesus became sub subjected for a moment on the cross. All right. Sin and death. Um, and the Bible is clear that mankind is under sin and under spiritual death or eternal death all right but that changes when you become born again you're created new 
for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are under law, but um, you you are not under law, but under grace. Romans six fourteen. All right, the Bible's pretty redundant. It keep re- reinforces reinforces the point of Jesus having dominion. First Peter four eleven says, if anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So this here is saying, right, or is teaching that it is the way of the Christian to glorify the Lord with every thought, word, and action. That dem- This demonstrates that the, 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 the one who is born again is in submission to another dominion. For all of the Christian's acts are done in the service of another, not in the service of self or furthering their own dominion or their reign. Um, and according uh, to a passage in First Peter, it's Jesus, the Messiah, to whom this dominion, right, in which the belong uh, or the born belong. First Peter continue, it continues in 5, 10, 11. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, per, uh, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. So Jesus fulfilled. He uh, The types and shadows pointed to him. He's the last Adam. All right. He comes and fulfills what Adam and then Israel and all the other types and stuff. He comes and fulfills all of this. All right. So um, it, it, it's re- really difficult at this point then to uh, to argue that, <laughs> that man has dominion because the scriptures say that Jesus has it. Jesus has dominion. Okay. Um, it, it's equally difficult to argue that God is mandating us still man to take dominion. We can't take dominion because we can't wrestle it away from the son of man, the son of God, Jesus. No. Now, does he share it with us? You know, (laughs) get to that in a moment. But it, it seems that the biblical narrative teaches that God recognized Adam's failure to sustain a good dominion. And he gave it to his son who was successful in doing so. All right. All right. And those who don't know Christ then are enslaved to sin. Right. So sin has dominion and authority over them. The gospel is that Jesus frees the, the repentant from that bondage and takes the, that born again new creation out from the dominion of sin and darkness and places them in the kingdom and dominion of Jesus. And this is forever established, right? Re- Revelation 1, 5, 6, from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth, to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So Jesus' dominion is forever. It's established. It's a spiritual kingdom. It's never going to fail. It's firmly established. It's accomplished. It will never be handed over to, um, to, to darkness and death like Adam's dom- dominion. Therefore, trying to gain Adam's dominion back, is there's no point to it because Jesus has it and he's fulfilled it. Okay? So those who are born again have re- been removed from the former dominion transferred into the the messiah's dominion all right so it's it apart from jesus it's not man's dominion <clears throat> which fallen man is under right it, 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 sin and death came from the curse which was the work of the the serpent and um the the work uh, of 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 sin which jesus came and destroyed right <laughs> First John three eight. Okay, so, <clears throat> um, you ha- you have all of that. Okay, so, what do- does does the 
what does that mean for us, for the believers? Does the dominion of Jesus, right, and in which we now belong to, allow the believer to ex- exercise the dominion of Jesus on earth? So the key is understanding from whom this dominion came. Okay, so the original dominion given to Adam has ceased to exist. Okay, that's it. Follow man has no claims, no stake, no power, dominion. All those that are condemned are enslaved to death and darkness. Okay. For those who are born again, <clears throat> for those who have tasted the heavenly gift and have been redeemed into the perfection of Jesus, their citizenship is found in heaven, per Philippians 3.20, have become one body in Jesus, right? So the born again have been given the birthright of being heirs with him. So this is a new dominion that's been perfectly established through Jesus. The question is, does the dominion translate now to us, right, while we still live our lives until we go on into eternity, right? Um, It does, but not in the way that people, I think, teach it. And, you know, what I mean by that is... You know, like the people like the weather warriors and we have to, you know, you you take dominion over, you know, rebuke thing, rebuke the storms in Jesus name and things like that. Um, I believe the exercising of the of Jesus's dominion. okay, it it belongs to him, but I believe he has subdued the earth. And that it's through us in our faith, okay, our faith that has come to us and has then had us believe in Jesus and brought us into repentance and being made born again. It's that faith. It's a practical faith. And that faith relies solely always on Jesus. And you can get into the the gifts and the signs and the wonders, but I, I'm not going there. I like I I'm a continuationist. I believe in the gifts. I just don't believe they're as normative today. All right. Another discussion where people here would say, well, then you don't have enough faith. I don't believe that because it's the size of a mustard seed. OK. It's my faith in Jesus. He's the one who will exercise that dominion of the truth of the gospel and the truth of his commend, uh, kingdom. It's the truth of God's rule and reign in my life and over the rest of the body that exercises that dominion when um, when we present the gospel, when we edify and educate and exhort and encourage and love one another and we live our lives created for good works in Christ, right? And uh, glorifying God in our lives. So the gospel will spread. Jesus spreads. Glory is always given to God through this. And that is Jesus' dominion being exercised through us on a daily basis. It's not just, it's not taking dominion. It's not gaining more dominion. It's not us who do that. It's always through Christ's power enabling us to do that. So it's not about taking or grabbing hold or trying to know how to do this thing in dominion because the dominion is uh, Jesus's and it's been established and it's a done deal. We dedicate ourselves to the apostles teachings. We grow in relationship through the word, through prayer, through worship and fellowship through with other believers and in the body we grow and into a fullness of knowledge of God and who he is and who we are in Christ and that exercising power then of that we are enabled and empowered uh, uh, by, by the Holy Spirit can come through us. But that's still Jesus. And Jesus is exercising that fully established dominion through the, the works through the teaching, the preaching, the prayer, the fellowship, any of that. It's not all it's not about commands and rebuking. It's about living Christ-like lives, not 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 being 
just exactly like Christ, but living lives that pro, uh, uh, proclaim the gospel, proclaim Jesus, and actually then would proclaim that his, the dominion is his and has been established. And that's what I think then um, r- what it comes down to. So I, I do believe then the actual dominion mandate loses all argument when you look at it that way. Um, and it's not so it's not Genesis one dominion. It's now Jesus's dominion because it's been established. He brought the kingdom. He established the kingdom. It was inaugurated and consummated. The new Jerusalem is here through the new covenant. And the church is the body. All right. It's the city. It's the gates that are never closed saying, come all who thirst, thirst no more. That's the dominion of Jesus Christ in the world now. It's his. Everything's been put under his feet. Everything's been put under his feet. So that is his dominion. He, he's brought us into that, and he shares that with us. But it's not a control. It's not militant. It's not commanding and rebuking and doing these things. It, it's just living in Christ because living in Christ is living in his dominion and that's what true dominion when you see it through the 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 narrative of the Bible is all right there's another episode if you have any questions comments disagreements you can send them my way at the kingdom project podcast at gmail.com and until next time be a mustard seed be leaven thanks for listening